say, up to Pole, and then maybe over to the Australian camp at Davis on the east side of Antarctica, and that they would have the navigation going to Pole, and when they went to Pole, that meant that they would have to cross over the trans-Antarctic mountains that go completely across, almost dividing the big continent of Antarctica. Well, as they would fly toward the pole, they would get to the same place every time called the Beardmore Glacier. And half a dozen different times, they all saw this, there would be silver glinting circular craft. They would come up over the trans-Antarctic mountains. They would never cross over into the Beardmore Glacier. Almost they began to wonder, is there some territorial constriction here? But they would be in their C-130 and they would see the silver disks come together in pairs, stop midair, one take off, another go up, go down. But those silver disks never came toward the C-130 and they all began to notice as a crew that they never flew over that Beardmore Glacier and they would joke and talk among each other well, what do you think we've got here? Are these UFOs, are these extraterrestrials, and is somebody keeping them on that side of the Beardmore Glacier like a joke? But there came a moment in 95 to 97 where they got a call, it was a medvac, and it was somebody over in the Davis camp on the Australian far eastern side that had gotten severe burns from a, some kind of a kitchen cooking explosion. And it was very serious, and they knew that they normally would have a five and a half hour to six hour flight. And they wanted to see if they could cut down that time because of the emergency. And the captain had talked with the crew and said, does anybody understand why we have this no fly zone about five miles away from Pole? that's going to eat up more time. Is there any reason why we can't go through that no-fly zone? And the answer that came back was, it's supposed to be a air monitoring station within five miles of the South Pole. And the captain said, we're flying at 35,000 feet. We're not going to be contaminating air down there. This guy over here is in an emergency situation. Let's just go through this no-fly zone. All of the crew is looking down the window, and the man who has contacted me about all of this that I call Brian S. said, to their astonishment, when they are so close to what would be the South Pole in this no-fly zone, he said it was like a perfect sort of circle hole, and it seemed to have a slant going into it, like this was constructed. They said the size. They all said it must be the size of a football field, which would be 300 feet in diameter, clearly going down into the ice. Well, when they got to Davis and they picked up their medical person and got it back to McMurdo, when they landed, they said there was a man in a suit. And that doesn't happen in Antarctica unless it's CIA, NSA, DIA, NRO, Intel, or counter Intel. And they are taken together as a crew and they are said, the man said to them, what you saw at pole, you did not see. Not now, not ever, you do not talk about that hole. 